Okay, we'll get started. So hi, everyone, and welcome again. Today, we're going to be talking to Lorna Brown, the author of the um, new and upcoming book, Tableau Desktop Cookbook. My name is Sophie Sparks. I'm the community manager here at the Information Lab. I'll just stop sharing my screen. Um, and it's just wonderful to have you here today. Now, I look quite green in this lighting. I am not this uh, jaundiced in real life. It's a, a very, very sunny, hot day here in London. And this happens to be the coolest part of my house, which is basically in a cupboard. So <laughs> I'm, I'm calling you in from a cupboard and I've got with me Lorna. Lorna, how are you going from a bit further up north? Yeah, I'm not too bad. I've had to move out of my office as well because my su the sun starts setting and my office just starts heating up. So I'm currently in my kitchen um, looking out to my garden where I can see the sun, but I'm nice and cool in the shade. So that's quite nice. That's, that's very nice. Well, there you go. So you're in a kitchen and I'm in a cupboard. Um, as soon as it gets slightly warm here in the UK, we seem to complain about everything. Um, now, everyone who's joining, if you do have any questions for Lorna, please do type them into the chat box or the Q&A and Lorna will answer them for you. How today's um, going to go, we're just going to have a quick sort of fireside, who wants fire right at the moment, um, a quick ice cream side, uh, Q&A style chat with Lorna so she can tell us a little bit more about her upcoming book. Um, so if you don't know Lorna, she is a, an absolute uh, amazing uh, contributor to the Tableau community, um, a Tableau ambassador, a Zen master, now author. Um, and you may know her from such community initiatives as Workout Wednesday or Tableau Tip Tuesday. And did you may have caught her Tableau tipping live at various conferences in the past. Um, so Lorna, would you like to, if people don't know you, um, aren't familiar with you, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and what got you started with Tableau? Yeah, of course. So um, for those that don't know, um, I did get married early last year. So my name was Lorna Eden. So you may recognize the old name over the new name. Um, but yeah, my, my Tableau journey started when I was doing my master's degree in biomechanics. Um, in around 2014 um, and I was on a placement with an Olympic sport and they first started using Tableau for their coaches and athletes to see and understand their data. So I was getting to grips with trying to visualize some things in Tableau, um, fell in love with it because I saw how easy it was for the coaches and athletes to really and truly understand the data that we're showing them. And as I was coming towards the end of that uh, placement, I actually stumbled across the Information Labs Data School. And the Data School, for those that don't know, is um, a two and a half year program, uh, which you get four months of training of Tableau and Alteryx, and then followed by four lots of six month placements to put into practice what you've just learned. And you get paid to learn. So why would you not want to do that? Um, so I, yeah, I, the, the application process was create a viz of something that you enjoy. So why not? So I submitted it and I, I've never looked back since. Um, and it, it's been a great journey so far. And that I, I applied for that within um, 2015. Um, so I did my four months and then at the, at the time back then it was three lots of placements. Um, but once my contract came to an end, it was time for me to move back home and find a job up in the north um, instead of down south. Um, so, but I continued with Tableau and Alteryx throughout the next two years. And then I eventually came back to uh, the Information Lab as a core team consultant. Um, and during that time away from the Information Lab, I started co-leading Workout Wednesday, Tableau Tip Tuesday with Andy Creeble, and then also a co-lead of the Northwest Tableau user group as well because I'm a really big fan of giving back to the community that's really helped me. And also I was a, I am a Tableau public ambassador and also a Tableau Zen master. And now almost really close to being an author. Well, he's got a concrete date on, on Amazon saying this book will be released at least in, in uh, amazon.co.uk at the end of August. So I think you can guess you are, you're, if people <laughs> can order it, then you're definitely an author. Um, that's uh, I, I know I've, known you since you started at uh, the data school um, so it's it's so amazing to see how much you've grown in such a 
short period of time um, comparatively. Um, you did mention um, Workout Wednesday and Tableau Tip Tuesday as part of um, some of the initiatives you, you were doing. Um, how has joining community initiatives helped you learn um, more about Tableau? And then how is that learning fed into um, your book? Yeah, so um, as part of the data school, um, Andy Creeble is one of the, the biggest leaders of Makeover Monday um, alongside, um, it was Andy Cotgreave and now it's Eva Murray. Um, so the Makeover Monday was the first community initiative that I really got involved in and that was to up my design skills. And as, I, as I've grown through the community, I've seen lots of different in initiatives come through. Um, and Tablet Tip Tuesday was another one that Andy Creeble started. And um, every Tuesday, or practically every Tuesday, he would release a new tip to the community. And everyone loves to see different tips and tricks that you can to learn from, especially if you can use them straight away within your business. So um, over the two years that I was away, I reached out to Andy and asked him if I could help out um, with these Tablet Tip Tuesdays. And the, the biggest thing for me is being able to give back to the community. So I I think I know Tableau. I, there's always some things that I definitely don't know and I'm, I'm always learning like everyone else, but I love to be able to find those little use cases and be give them back to the community. And that's also where Work at Wednesday is fitting quite nicely with that as well. Um, Anne Jackson and um, Luke Stanky reached out to me in 20... 18, I think it was, um, and asked me to join the team. Um, and, and with that, they um, wanted me to be a coach with them to help give back to the community again. So with that, it's creating weekly challenges. Um, I think it was one a month for me. Um, and, and that was giving use cases rather than just specific tips and tricks. So you have a business idea that you then want to put forward um, and you can then find different techniques of being able to do that. And, and one of the great things about Workout Wednesday is that you can, there's so many ways of being able to do one thing. And even now, when I see the solution videos from other community members, um, I'm still learning something new of several different ways, especially from uh, Rosario and Donna Coles. They've just been incredible in the way that they've um, approached the challenges. Um, both initiatives have helped me enable uh, to collaborate with some um, big people within the Tableau community. So I get to work alongside Andy Creeble every day. Um, some people might see that as a bad thing, um, but I really, he, he is a pain, but we, we all love him really. Um, but it, we can bounce around ideas off each other and make sure that the community are getting something new every week. And, and Workout Wednesday has had some fantastic contributors over the past three years. Um, and I've made some really lifelong friends um, throughout it, especially Anne, Luke, Curtis, Sean and Kendra. Um, and I know this is about me and my book, but um, Luke and Anne also have a book coming out very shortly. Um, and it's a couple of weeks before mine called Tableau Strategies. And their book would follow on nicely from mine once I get into telling you what it's about. Um, but it basically you have the basics from the Tableau cookbook and then you can go onto theirs, which is use cases, which will then allow you to implement um, the stuff that you've learned from my book. Thank you. And I'm just uh, putting the links to Workout Wednesday, um, Tableau Tip Tuesday and the um, Anne and Luke's book you just mentioned into the chat box um, as well. So I think that moves very neatly into your book. So um, why did you decide to write it? And then you've talked a lot about and why I was asking about these um, community initiatives is because I, I got to see a sneak preview of um, some of the early release chapters. And I think uh, what you're mentioning about sort of these use cases and these stepped ways that the community challenges um, help you approach them um, is, a, is a great way about how you've written your book. So I, two part question. Um, firstly, uh, why did you decide to write um, the book? And then after that, if you can maybe tell us a little bit about this unique recipe structure you've got for your um, for, for the Tableau cookbook. Yeah, of course. So like I said, over the past two years, I've got involved in a lot of community things that are outside of work. Um, Tableau Tuesday, Workout Wednesday, the Tableau user group. Um, 
and just lots of different things. And, and the reason for that is because the Tableau community helped me get to where I am today. And, and without it, I definitely wouldn't be here as an author or as a Zen master. Um, so for me, the book is my chance to give back to the community, give them something that, give them a piece of my knowledge and help them grow and learn and hopefully um, get to the stage where they fully understand Tableau or at least two until they get a new release out. Um, but um, it just, it's just a way for me to give back. Um, writing the book has helped me go back to the very basics again and remembering every step of the journey. Um, and I want to be the person who inspires someone else's journey. And I'm hoping the book and other initiatives will help do that as well. Um, to your second question, um, the unique structure. So if you've ever read a cookbook, um, it kind of follows, it gives you a little bit of information about the, the type of meal that you're creating, then it gives you the recipe, and then it goes on to a little bit more of a section at the bottom where you can add different things to that recipe to make it a little bit better or to change the way that it tastes. Um, and the Tableau cookbook follows a similar sort of thing. So it sets out a problem that you're gonna solve within Tableau. It gives you a solution. So you have step-by-step -step instructions of how to do a certain thing. And then it follows on with the discussion. And the discussion may be, how do you change certain parts of that recipe? Or it might just be additional steps that you need to follow to fully help you understand what it is that you're trying to do with, with each of these recipes. Does that help? <laughs> it does. I have to say, I love, really love the, the structure. I cook a lot as well. So following recipes is something I know how to do. Um, but I, I think if, um, especially if you are trying to approach a, a new problem in Tableau, it's a very logical way to, to go through it. Um, and it does, it does make things seem approachable and modular and you can add as you said the, the sort of the bits you know how would you take this further it's sort of you can add little blocks on um and around so i, I think it's a, a it's a i don't think i've seen another tableau book like it learning book like it so i think that it's a very <laughs> i i found That's it very exciting. <laughs> Well, I, maybe I haven't read enough, <laughs> enough tablet books. That's very, very possible. Um, and if anyone uh, listening does have any uh, of their favorite tableau books, um, please drop them into the into the chat so we can um, know what other what other books you found helpful in your tableau journey. Um, so, also part of the uh, the idea of these recipes is you've got um, top tips at the end, sort of sort of to wrap it all up, um, kind of like the dessert section the tastiest, I, okay, I shouldn't take this. I love desserts as well. Um, and uh, your, your top tips are sort of broken into two sets. They're proactive tips and then practical tips. Um, and these are sort of the, the quick take home, um, delicious ending to, to the recipe book. Um, I was wondering if you could maybe tell us a few of the proactive tips, things that people can start doing now before your book comes out to help them along their Tableau journey. Yeah, of course. So, um... I was getting towards the end of writing my book at the time and I didn't just want to end it with a standard conclusion um, because that's how all books end and I thought how can I implement what I've done over the, the course of the book but also my journey throughout Tableau and, and people know me from doing tips so why not give them some extra tips throughout so um, the proactive tips are, are mainly around things like um, go and find your local user group, um, be, read more books, resources, get some training um, and things like that. Um, and then throughout the course of the book, you'll actually see like a top tip section. Um, and that covers part of my technical tips. Now, there are 10 of each. Um, but I think the technical tips I'm going to leave until you maybe hopefully read the book. Um, but yeah, my, my proactive things is, is just, just get started and, and get going with Tableau itself. And if, if you're not up to speed on anything, then Workout Wednesday is a great way forward for that. Um, so joining those community initiatives like Workout Wednesday really helps you with those technical skills, um, especially if you're struggling with things like uh, table calculations or level of detail calcs. Um, whereas Makeover Monday, for example, would help you with your design skills. So 
wh whether you're at one end of the spectrum or the other, then there is a community initiative out there for you. Maybe Makeover Monday is not your thing and you're into sports. Um, so there's Sports Fist Sunday as well. And, and there's lots of other community initiatives. And if you go to the community hub, you can definitely find out more about them. And if it's prep you're after as well, uh, prepping data is a great um, challenge for you to do. And speaking of that, today um, on the 20th of July, um, there is a prepping data and workout Wednesday crossover challenge, which is coming out in approximately one hour's time. Um, so you'll get to um, watch the Tableau prep or at least do the Tableau prep. And then once you've prepped the data, you'll then be able to go through to Tableau Desktop and help with the Workout Wednesday. So, and if you're Power BI as well, there's also that, that track as well. I know we're talking Tableau right now. Um, we've got a, a question in from Tim, one of them, um, he's, he's dialed in and it fits quite nicely into what you are just saying then. So he, I want to know, especially for Makeover Monday, you've mentioned twice now that it's it's great for design, um, improving your design skills. He um, he wants to know, is it possible to summarize um, the key design tips you've learnt while doing Makeover Monday since you've done so many of them, I guess, very broad, broad brush oh, design yeah. skills? That's a, it's a great question. Um, I think it, it depends on on what it is that you're looking to get out of Makeover Monday and design skills. So so for me, my design skills have definitely changed. Um, I'm definitely now more focused on business style dashboards rather than the um, function sort of sort of side um, but Makeover Monday just allows you to experiment with different types of charts that you wouldn't normally do in your day-to-day -day. so um, I'd say if you're doing Makeover Monday try and experiment with what it is that you're trying to do and don't just stick to bar charts yes bar charts do most of the time make more sense um, but as long as the chart still makes sense and fits the data then it's definitely a good way to experiment um, but on the other side of that, don't just use a chart because you want to build it because it might not make sense. Um, so yeah, they're kind of my my tips for that. So Lorna, maybe when I'm after this, uh, after we've finished chatting, I might sneak through. Actually, could you instead of me sneaking through your Tableau, not sneaking, going through your Tableau public profile, could you find one of the very early Makeover Mondays you've done, and maybe one of the more recent ones, and share them on Twitter or something so we can see the the <laughs> how how. You know, oh, of course, over that time, you've also your technical skills have improved, but mainly focusing mm -hmm. on some of the d broad design differences that you would now either do or not do. Um, that I think that'd be very, very interesting to to track um, your your yeah. Tableau journey. <laughs> of course, I know um, my early so visits are, are terrible, and my current visits are also very poor. <laughs> so I. I <laughs> I know the uh, embarrassment of looking back. It's like those pictures from the, uh, like your early school photos. I've got some amazing Dilbert fro hair. It's, it's, it's yep. embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, my, my application viz for the data school is still way down there. Um, it's still, I think that's one of my first visits that I published onto my tablet public page. Um, I wouldn't get into the data school now if I submitted that viz. Um, but yeah, I think, um, one one of the tips that I, I don't um, it is in the book is is creating a tablet public page, but don't delete anything that you do because it does show that progression going forward. Um, I do look back now and cringe at the choices I made on that visualization, um, but definitely going forward, I, I hope you can see that things have changed in the way that I've designed certain things. Maybe it won't be a makeover Monday that I share, but more of a workout Wednesday. So you can see um, the different types of approaches from that older dashboard versus the newer dashboard. That'd be fantastic. Um, that'd be brilliant. Uh, so we've got a, um, another question um, from Tim, and this is why sorry and to do this we need to share the front cover of your book so the front cover of your book it's a, a Riley um, published book so all the Riley books have a animal on the front cover and you have a wolf um, why the wolf uh, that's a very good question um, so normally O'Reilly don't let you choose an animal front cover um, however I put together a very good reason um, why it should be a wolf 
the main reason I did want a wolf is because I'm a big Warrington Wolves fan um, and that's rugby league uh, here in the UK and um, I go to home and away games although the pandemic is causing some issues with that um, but I'm still a big fan of those and um, I have four wolf tattoos as well and and I just really like the wolf in general um, but there is a degree of logic to why I chose a wolf um, wolves are curious animals and which give us a clear indication of its high level of intelligence. Uh, the wolf has a degree of adaptability to varying conditions. It seems uh, the ability to learn readily and remember what is learned for long periods of time. Relating this back to a cookbook, each chapter is a recipe which has a problem and a solution. A solution is where the user will learn how to solve the problem and like wolves, humans can remember what is learned for long periods of time. Reading the cookbooks allows you to come part of a pact instead of thinking you are a lone wolf. So, and wolves also communicate, collaborate and share knowledge across generations, which is what a Tableau Zen Master does. So there's logic behind choosing a wolf, not just because it's my favorite animal. <laughs> I didn't know you were a Warrington Wolves fan. I just put that, put the link if anybody is at all interested in, in, see, in seeing what, <laughs> how Lorna likes to spend her free time. It does explain, Lorna, why you are so up on um, the Sports Biz Sundays as well, especially when, when yep. they're talking about rugby. That makes yep. a lot more sense now. <laughs> um, ah, that's, I, and it's very true about, uh, about um, sharing, sharing knowledge and Oh, I'm glad you got to have a wolf then on the front cover and not a yep. aardvark. Or... <laughs> yeah, it, it, I don't think you'll ever see uh, the same animal twice. So there's always a different animal on every single book. So I think my wolf is classed as a Eurasian wolf. Um, and there's lots of different wolves that you could have, they could have chosen. Um, but yeah, it's definitely exciting. Uh, somebody says a platypus is already gone. <laughs> That is, that is a shame. <laughs> uh, if I, uh, no, that's, it's one of those, like, what's your spirit animal? So now we can, we can, we know your spirit animal is a wolf. That's... <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so when, uh, when does a book go on sale? Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping uh, within the next couple of weeks, it goes to the printers. And at that point, um, it should be within a couple of weeks to a month. So I'm hoping um, end of September begin like the sorry the start of September to mid-September is when it's going to be released fully um, but you can pre-order it now on both the Amazon UK and Amazon US um, and I'm I, not sure about any other Amazons at the moment but and yeah. I have dropped links to both of those into the into the chat so everyone please do pre-order um, uh, Lorna's book because it does help it does help uh uh, O'Reilly and Amazon know that people want to, want more of this book and it will help um, with early sales and early ratings. Yeah, um, exactly. Oh, fantastic. So it sounds like it is a, it sounds like it is a tip-tastic book. Um, it really does sound like a lot of, um, you mentioned being involved in community a lot has, has helped you learn. If you could maybe tell us the three, like your three top things that you've learnt from participating in so many community events. I've seen you tip and you are like this. <laughs> um, and, I, and I know when you first started, well, when anyone first starts with Tableau, that is not the case, how they, how they, how they work and how they think. So what are some of the um, top things that participating so much and showing your work has really taught you um, how to use Tableau? Yeah, so, so from the early days, um, we were asked to create a blog or blog on the data school website and um, and I took that away and, and created my own blog and and personalized I've not done much on it at the moment because obviously the book has has took over that at the minute but um being able to write down my own thoughts yes it's for the community but then it's also for me and my own reference so the book is a great example of that now is I got my knowledge down on paper Therefore, I can always use it to go back to and reference if there was ever a time where I forgot a certain element or how to do something. Um, so top number one would be definitely read and write blogs. Um, if blogging isn't your thing, um, maybe videos won't be, but also videos are a great way of being able to get the message across. So 
creating those quick five minute videos and and the information lab have done a great job of um having those five minute how-to videos on on our youtube channel um so definitely check them out and tableau tip tuesday is also another one of those where it's it aims to be within five to ten minutes of giving you that information so you can digest it as quickly and um efficiently as possible over a lunch break or a quick break um in time um, my second would be um, attending conference and user groups. So um, user groups to start with because they're on a, such a smaller scale. And I know COVID has kind of put a kaput to most of those right now. Um, I, I'm really hopeful that things are going to start opening up again soon. But they have been virtual. And connecting to like-minded people like yourselves uh, has been really beneficial because you can find lots of different use cases that you can then take back to your business with you to be able to implement them straight away or learn from other people. And I think that the conferences is the same, just on a, a much larger scale. You can go to several different talks and then be inspired and um, motivated to go back to work and, and do those new things and implement them straight away. So definitely, if you can, try and attend a conference or a user group when they are back. Um, I think I saw Brit on the call. Um, come on, Brit, let's sort it out. <laughs> um, and then third, um, it's a good question. <laughs> I think um, Tableau Public, just having a look through the gallery and being inspired by all of the different viz of the days and, and the, the featured visualizations on Tableau Public is definitely something that has inspired me to move forward with different types of visualizations to try and create those resources for people to use and, and look back on. There are three very good and very sound tips and they're things I, there's very common sense sounding, but it, it really does require an effort to make yourself go and do them, especially the blogging or sharing your knowledge because that's, uh, it's um, can be quite daunting to start to do it, but I guess once you start doing it, it becomes much easier. Um, are there any from uh we've mentioned you mentioned the tableau public gallery there as your last sort of tip or thing to look at um aside from tableau are there any um non tableau related resources or sites or groups that you have that you follow or look at frequently that you find particularly inspiring um or in, um, informative about other trends in visualization or design yeah so um i think the data is society is definitely up and coming um, and it's definitely stabilized. Um, so try and check that out. Um, there's got lots of different information and, and different people speaking um, within those. Um, and just, um, I know it's heading back to Tableau, but just Tableau user groups, um, they do get the, the inspiration and design skills from there. And then um, I do actually use Pinterest when I'm trying to look for some things as well. So I do search for the topic and then put infographic at the end to just try and give me some more inspiration around different design things as well. And I think um, uh, Cole Nathlick is a great book resource. And there's one with Nadia Brammer and Shirley. I think the Shirley Wu. The yeah, what's that book called again? Data sketches. Yes, that one. That yeah, da data sketches <laughs> is is a really great book, and um, it's big, um, but it definitely gives you that inspiration, and it also goes through their process of how they did it, not just the design itself. So definitely check that one out. And as Tom said in the chat about storytelling with data is Cole's community site as well. Yeah, and they also run monthly challenges if you want um, that is a tool agnostic if you want a, a sort of another space to, to get inspired by. Um, and Tim also mentioned that downloading yeah, from Tableau Public, downloading visas and back solving how they made them. I know that's how I started getting using Tableau yeah. and, and figuring out how to do things was um, unpicking other people's work, which is just and, amazing that it's out there that you can do that. 
and and the perk at the minute is that you don't actually have to download them you can make a copy online um so if you click make a copy you go into the web browser version of tablet public and therefore you can still see how it's going you can save it to your own tablet public at that um stage it will just reference the original back to the person that you've um took the bids from yeah no that's uh i haven't actually used um tablet public's new online like fully online this but it is amazing um to to think you can now do that finally all, all in the browser yeah <laughs> and there's a, an, another um and Tim just wrote, oh, that's a Tableau tip for Tuesday. Since it's Tuesday, that's there. There you go, Lon. That's your Tableau tip Tuesday for today. <laughs> um, uh, I've got another question in. Um, what non-Tableau tools do you use the most? Um, like Excel, Figma, PowerPoint, Google Sheets? Good question. Um, prior to recently being introduced to Figma, um, I do use PowerPoint a lot for creating icons and images to go into Tableau. Um, I also use Alteryx and Tableau Prep counts as non-Tableau, right? Because it's Tableau Prep, not Tableau Desktop. Is that, does that count? <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's lots of different tools that you can use. It just depends on what it is that you're trying to do. Um, Figma is great for quick templating. So you can quickly sketch up something to showcase your ideas. Um, and, and walk people through different designs and iterations. Whereas if you try to do that in Tableau at the moment, it would take you probably quite a lot of time. Um, and it's something that um, I would like to speak to the, the Tableau devs about to make sure that we're trying to optimize that as, as best as possible. Brilliant. Well, we're, this is going to be a short and sweet uh, non-fireside cooling chat. Um, so we've just gone past uh, half past five here. So if we have, um, oh, we've got another question. Any tips or insights on Einstein analytics? Since we're oh. pushing pushing the boat out with Tableau Public's <laughs> new new features, what do we know about Einstein? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I haven't dabbled with Einstein analytics yet. Um, however, um, on our on the Information Labs YouTube channel, there is a video on both Tableau Prep versus Einstein Analytics and also Tableau Desktop versus Einstein Analytics. Um, and they compare the pros and cons of both sets of tools. Um, so if you have a look at them, you'll be able to hopefully see some tips and some similarities and differences between both sets of software. All right, so hopefully Sophie will grab that link and I... put it in the chat or description later i will i will add it into the description later um just, uh, any well just as we wrap up um any further questions anyone and while um any last questions are getting typed into the uh the chat box or the q a box um lorna can you i know you said you wanted to leave all the technical tips to the end so could you share maybe one of your favorite recipes from the book um, yeah, absolutely. So um, this one isn't necessarily a recipe, but this is kind of just a tip that I use throughout. Um, it's one of my quick tips or my top tips for the book. And um, average of zero or average of one is your best friend. And that is could either be an um, ad hoc calculation or you could um, create a calculation for that. And the reason why is because it just aligns things centrally. Um, if you use the average of one, you can write a line. And if you use the average of minus one, you can left align. So it just allows you to have that flexibility on making sure things are in the right place. But then also when you do put it into a dashboard and into containers, uh, Tableau allocates it the correct amount of space rather than just trying to squish it all in because it doesn't have an axis or a header. So whenever you're creating something, try and make sure it does have that axis or a header in both rows and columns. And Tableau should just about align, give it the right amount of space to use within a container. And that's handy for show hide containers, preferably. That is a fantastic, fantastic tip. Um, and if you want more brilliant tips like that, then uh, you'll need to 
buy the book when it comes out in <laughs> just over a month's time. Um, so thank you everyone who's who's dialed in and thank you everyone who's asked questions. I think I've uh, managed to answer, say um, most of the questions or say, say all the questions that have come through. We did mention a lot of links in this talk and I will add them, we'll um, put the recording of this video out in the, um, tomorrow and I will include all these extra links um, and tips that Lorna has told us in the uh, in the show notes. Um, so you can go and um, go and click through for all of them. Um, so yes, thank you so much, Lorna, for joining us today. And everyone who um, has dialed in, thank you for dialing in. And please do go and pre-order Lorna's book. It should be out um, at the end of August, early September in the UK, and possibly a tiny bit later in the US, um, just judging by what um, Amazon is saying at the moment. Sophie, so are thank we going to so mention much. the um, potential competition here? Oh, or... yes, we shall. Okay, so <laughs> uh, we, um, we would also love to give away a few signed copies of Lorna's new book. So um, please do, and everyone who's uh, signed up for today's session, whether you uh, um, will get an email notifying you that this is coming up, we're going to have a, uh, a, a competition to... Um, have a, win a few signed copies of the book. This will be launched on Twitter um, and we're going to be, um, and potentially Lorna, we should also maybe put a link in an email. It's just going to be a quiz asking about some of the tips Lorna has mentioned in this talk. So please do re-listen to, to this talk and We've got a few great tips Lorna's told us about, including that average of one or negative one. Um, so keep your eyes out for the chance to win um, a signed copy of Lorna's new book. Also, if you do have any favorite tips of your own that you would like to share with the community um, and with Lorna, please do let her know on Twitter. I've shared her, her Twitter handle further up and also be in the show notes. Um, Lorna, if you get a flood of extra Tableau tips, I think that will just be brilliant for everybody um, sharing, sharing the love around. So yeah, thank you all for joining and hope you have a, from me and Lorna, a lovely afternoon. And if you, I know we've got some people joining in from the US and Delaware we saw. Um, so I hope you have a good start or lunchtime. And if you're joining in from further uh, east and then a good evening as well. So thank you guys Thanks so everyone. much and goodbye. Bye.